This is James from the Dev Genie Academy, and welcome to the 3D Game Engine series, Episode 3. And in this episode, we'll be working on our Game Engine Loop. So, without further ado, let's get straight to it. And in our core package, create a new class called Engine Manager. There's a few variables that we need to set up first of all, one of which is a nanosecond, which is just a 1 followed by 9 zeros and an uppercase L at the end. Make sure it's an uppercase, just to get rid of the warning message. We also need a frame rate, which will just default to a thousand for now. And we also need a FPS, which is just going to be a private static int. We also need a frame time, which is one divided by the frame rate. We could also do with a Boolean as well, which is going to capture whether the engine is running, because we don't really want more than one instance of the engine running at a time. We need a reference to the window manager because we'll need to be getting the width and the height of the window. And we can also set an error callback so we can capture any errors that may arise as well. So first of all we need to make a init method which will throw an exception if there is any. And we can just instantiate that error callback. Same way as we did, well similar to what we did before, but we can just do error callback create print and pass the system.error or e double r. And then we can say window equals launcher dot get window. And at the moment we've got that window manager as local. So let's go back into the launcher, make that value accessible. So we can do that by creating a public static getter for the window. And I need to make that static. And I need to make the and I need to make the variable itself private static. So back in the engine manager we can import that launcher class and we have access to the window here. And we can also call window.init, so in the launcher we don't need that init method in there anymore. And we also want a public void start method which again throws an exception and we're going to call the init method we've just created. And we can check to see if we are running, if we are we do return, we don't want to be calling run again but if we're not then we can call the method called run. What we also want to do is we want to make a private void stop function. We also want to make a private void input. And a private void update. And also a private void cleanup. So now we've got all of those empty functions done. We can do some getters and setters for the FPS. So in the cleanup method, very easily, it's window.cleanup, error callback.free and glfw, glfw terminate and in the update method we can leave that empty for now in the render we can then just call window.update and in the input method we don't need anything there at the moment and in stop it's just basically the reverse of the star method so if we're not running return and then we set is running to false so the real meat and potatoes of this class is the run method we need to set running to true so this function doesn't get run more than once we can also have a few local variables, frames and frame counters. Uh, we need to set last time to the system.nano time. And we can also do with a double unprocessed time as well. That will tell us whether or not we need to start rendering the screen. So the first while loop of this is while we are running, we then have a boolean called render, which is going to be instantiated to false. We then need a long start time, which again is just system.nano time a long pass time which is calculated by making the start time negative the last time and then after that we can then say last time equals start time for the next loop so unprocessed time then becomes plus equal past time divided by the nanosecond and again if we cast nanosecond to a double that will fix that warning message that's showing up and uh, frame counter then is plus equal to past time and we can call our input function here and then our second while loop while unprocessed time is greater than our frame time the value that we set to a thousand earlier on if that's the case then we can set render to true and then we just decrement unprocessed time by frame time so this is where we check to see if the window should close if that's the case we call that function stop and if frame counter is greater than equal to nanosecond we then set our FPS to frames, 
we then do can do window dot set title and we can do game actually what we can do instead of doing the same bit of text in the same place more than once so instead of copying this through into here what we can do is we can make a constant variable for that we can do frames equals zero and frame counter equals zero as well so after all of that while up there we need to say if we are rendering then we need to call update we need to call render we need to say frames plus plus so we get our FPS and then clean up if you go into your core package and let's create another package from there called utils and create a new class called consts or constants and in here we're just going to make a public static final string title and I'm just going to call that dev genie engine so what we can do with that now is we can go into our engine manager and we can replace this bit of text with the title and uh, so we need to put the class name consts in front and we can do the same thing in the launcher class as well uh, but first we can just make a static reference of the engine manager engine there we go and get rid of that version check as well let's change this now to consts.title and then we can do engine equals a new engine manager it needs to be after the window is called because engine is using window we can then get rid of all of that old loop from last week and inside of a try catch query what we're going to do is we're going to call engine.start so that will start up our engine and that will start running so make sure that you have got frame counter plus equals past time also input mark that as set and we can run that and now we've got the window running and we've got the frame counter running along with the title so thanks very much for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed and if you do have any questions please leave them in the comments below next week we'll be looking at the render management class so we're very close to start rendering objects to the screen